I'm excited. To be, <laughs> I'm excited to be back with you guys. Like Lauren said, my name is Erin, and today we have a featured painting. Uh, Lauren or Emily, tell me if you remember, this was a photograph that another alum took, correct? Pretty sure. Yes, yes this, this was from our, our, our life member calendar. This was there a, a submission. There yep. you go. I'm going to angle it up just a little bit. Anyway. anyway, so that came from one of photograph from one of you guys. So thank you for the photograph. Um, as our inspiration painting for the for this evening. Um, so I am going to teach you guys how to paint. I have a canvas here and how to draw. So I'm going to be jumping back and forth all night. Um, but you guys can take your time and you can also re uh, this is being recorded so you can rewatch it later if there is ever a question on what to do or if you just want to add some more layers to it later, you can do that too. Um, all right, so the question I get asked, what are we working with? All right, so let me turn this down just a little bit. All right, so I'm working on a 16 by 20 canvas and I have what I'm going to use four different brushes, okay? So just to give you a size difference, here's my hand. So this is what we call a number 10 flat brush. This is a, believe it or not, these two are the same exact brush. One's an old one and all fluffed out. The other one is a new one. So these are number six round it has a nice point to it and then there's a little teeny tiny detail brush a number one round so just basically a flat one it's about an inch a rec two round ones like an older one um and a pointier one and then a teeny tiny detail brush almost like a fine line marker okay so that's the brushes that i'm going to be using you're going to need a napkin to dry off your brushes you're going to need some water i have my water in here and then the colors that we're going to be painting with these are acrylics and I am using absolutely imperative to have these colors on this side, and I'll explain in a second. But if you have green, hi from South California, good job, hey Tampa, Florida, <laughs> welcome. Um, if you have green, that it's easier, you don't have to mix it. But you're definitely going to need a yellow, a red, and a blue, the three primary colors, white, and I also have brown and black, okay? So again, green, you don't necessarily have to have that one. You can mix them, but you definitely need yellow, red, and blue, white, brown, and black, okay? All right, so that's our colors. For drawing, you just need something to draw on. I just have a larger sheet of paper and I'm using oil pastels only because they show up much brighter on camera but you guys can do it with colored pencils you can do it with crayons chalk even if you have chalk okay um you're also going to want to draw you're going to want a pencil to sketch out what we're going to color later all right so like i said if you're with me and you're going to be doing paper just hang tight for a few minutes i'm going to get the painting going because we need to let the paint dry while this is drying, I'll jump over here and draw. So let me fix this again. Here you go, Colorado. Hey, 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 that's cool. All right, let's see if I can get this. There we go. All right, so we're going to start our canvas and we're gonna do the background. The background is the sky color and then down to the green grass, okay? So that's step one. Step two will be this background trees and the barn and then the last step of this is going to be our tree all right so go ahead and grab your big daddy brush sorry i <laughs> like lauren said i've been painting for a while so i refer to them as big daddy medium mommy and bitty baby um so if i say those words now you know why so grab your big brush and we're gonna mix a nice light blue for our sky anytime you mix paints I want you to grab a chunk and put it somewhere else on your palette. Okay. And yes, of course, you can just watch while you work. That is perfectly fine. All right. And then you're going to take a little bit of blue. So blue and white. I'm sorry if you hear the dog in the background. She will be barking here in a few minutes. Just a warning because her father is going to be getting home in a few. <laughs> so. All right, so I'm going to mix a nice light blue. And you're not, there's no wrong way to paint. There's, you can add paint however you see fit. Okay. I'm going to start with a really pretty blue up at the top. 
You can go side to side, you can go crisscross, you can go up and down. It really does not matter. You can even kind of swish in a little bit of darker blue like I just did here and I'm just gonna blend it. If you wanna get a little variation so it's not all one solid color. And we're gonna take this blue about the top half of the canvas before we start transitioning to white, okay? Isn't it always that the children and the dogs like to make noise when you're doing something, right? All right. All right. So you have blue. I have a falcon. I'd say about the top third is what I have for blue. And then I did not wash my brush at all. I don't know if you can see the colors there. Here we go. I just went and grabbed some white, okay? I am going to put some white underneath the blue and I'm gonna go up into the blue a little bit and then come back down. Go up into the blue a little bit, come back down. And I'm gonna keep doing this to take this darker blue, I mean, it's a light blue, but this darker blue and make it lighter. So as we get down to here, it's gonna be almost white because if we, go from blue to yellow, it's going to look green. If we don't go from blue to white first, blue and yellow make green. We don't want green in our sky. So we need to make our blue blend very gradually. And that's kind of what the photo had too, by the way. The sky went from a darker blue. I mean, it's still a bright, light blue sky, but went from a darker color down to a very light color. Then it transitioned down down to um, like a yellow, very little bit of a yellow. All right. So I'm just gonna keep working this, blending, smushing as I go. More white, more white as I get down. The bottom third is about what I'm gonna leave open for now. But I want to transition this light blue down to white. There we go. Okay. And if you want to make it really, really smooth, you do really, really long brush strokes from edge to edge. That way you're not going to see where you start the brush on the canvas and where you pull it off, right? So Start on the edge, long line all the way off over here. If you want it smooth. That one is not smooth. I did not do a smooth sky on that one. That one I made a little rougher. But this one, like I said, I just wanted to do a little smoother on this one. All right. So when you are done with this, now I am probably going to be going a little faster. Um, and if I am, let me know. All right. Sometimes I tend to go a little fast and I don't mean to. It's just my natural style. But once you get this much of your canvas done, you need to wash your brush. Okay. Proper way to wash it is to put it in the can and paint the bottom of the can. Funny story. I don't know if I told you this yet, Emily, or not, but um, Back in the beginning when I started my business, of course, we're out at restaurants and bars. And I said to the ladies who were enjoying a few drinks with their dinner, I said, to wash your brush, paint the bottom of the can. I kid you not, this poor woman, she started doing this, literally painting the bottom of the can. So I have a couple of cans in my possession that have some paint at the bottom of them. So um, it's important to put it in the water to wash your brush is basically what I'm trying to get at. I just thought that was a funny story I wanted to share with you. All right. So after you're done washing, you're going to wring out your brush by wiping it on the lip. Then you wipe it on your napkin. So acrylics turn drippy and like watercolory really easily. So you need to be careful that you don't have extra water on your brush. You can have a little bit, but not a lot, okay? 
Um, unless you want that drippy look, which is kind of cool. And sometimes I do in my paintings, but that's not what this one is. Okay. All right. Well, you guys are, let me just double check the chat. Do, do, do. All right. Make sure there was no questions so far. All right. So we now went from a darker blue, which is a real bright light blue anyway, but down to white. So now we're going to go from white to a pale yellow. All right. So I already have white up here. I'm now going to mix. I'm now going to mix a pale yellow. So a pile of white. You only need a little bit of yellow wee little bit because we don't really want a stark yellow sky it's not a sunset so we just want a little bit of yellow i don't know if you can kind of see it's like a pale yellow okay you're literally just gonna add a line can you guys see that on camera barely right that's how pale it is it's like the color you might paint a nursery, really pale yellow, okay? So you get that band of color down. You're then gonna do, just like we went from blue to white, we're gonna go from yellow, but we're gonna go up to white, okay? So I'm gonna do a band of white right above it, touching my blue a little bit. Now here's a trick, okay? So I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you can, okay, there you go. Band of yellow, band of white. Both of them are wet. To get them to blend and be like an ombre to go from light to dark, I want you to literally go up and down, zigzag your brush in between the two colors. Okay, I don't know if you saw me, I literally was going up and down, zigzag to blend it. So the tippy top of my white is still white. The very bottom of my yellow is still yellow, but in between it's kind of a mixture. So to smooth that out, you just do long brush strokes. Okay, So that's kind of a trick for you guys if you're ever painting on your own and you wanna mix two colors together. It has to be done while they're wet, otherwise it won't work. So you gotta work a little faster on that. Um, but you can always do that little zigzag trick because it'll bring just a little bit of color down and also a little bit of color up so they blend all right so i'm just gonna blend out the top of my white so it blends into that blue a little bit and now we're ready to do grass right the grass that's really far away right this little triangle of lighter green we're going to take it all the way across because after we do that we're going to put the barn on it all right and then this has to dry before we get to the next step so this light green again mix it somewhere else on your palette a little bit of green i'm sorry she is working and some white She's been out of the habit of doing virtual stuff for a while, so she's being a brat. <laughs> Sorry. All right. And we are going to paint, let's put this on the edge here, the bottom green, right up to that yellow line. However far down you went with the yellow. Again, this is what one, two, three, four, five. Maybe one seventh, one eighth of the canvas is going to be the grass in the distance, far away. Okay. Now, something I wanted to point out to you guys: Ev, it's almost impossible to duplicate a painting. Okay. I painted that painting, and mine is already looking different than that one. Okay. So if you guys know that going in. Your painting is gonna look like yours. You'll have a better time, all right? I'm just trying to get this green line. Hey, Erin, we had someone comment um, and ask if you can go a little bit slower. So maybe after the grass, you wanna give them a few minutes to catch up? Sure, oh, that's, we have to anyway, cause we gotta let it dry to get on uh, to the next step anyway. So, but yes, absolutely. 
If you guys have any questions on anything, yell at me, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do, I, we need to let this dry, all right? So you guys can have time to catch up. If you have any questions, again, just yell it out. And I want you also, while I'm showing people how to draw, you guys can go around and paint your edges, okay? So this color, you're gonna wrap right around. This color, you're gonna wrap right around. Green, you're gonna wrap right around, okay? So if you're waiting, not knowing what to do, that's what you guys are gonna do next. If you paint your edges, top, bottom, and sides, it'll give a more polished, finished look. And you don't have to frame it if you don't want to. You can still hang it on the wall and it still looks like a completed painting, okay? All right, so you guys finish up with that, okay? Um, if you're still a little bit behind or you still have wet paint, the trick to drying it a little faster is using a hair dryer. So if you have a hair dryer, feel free to hit it um, in between layers to speed up the drying process if you if you want to, if you don't have to. All right. Drawing on paper, grab a pencil. I'm going to try. I, actually, I have to do it in Sharpie so you guys will see it. If I draw on pencil, you won't. The camera won't pick it up, but you guys are going to do pencil so you can erase it. OK. So we're gonna just lay in a couple of things. For example, our grass, we're going to draw our building, gently start our tree, okay? Just like the tree trunk and the tree branch, a couple of tree branches, um, and then a couple of trees in the background there, okay? Not a lot, because the rest of it we're going to color. <coughs> so. Let's draw this line here. <clears throat> Hang on one second. We'll see if that works. Hopefully she'll stop. All right, so we're gonna draw a line about, again, like one seventh or so of the way up is going to be this green line. So just lightly draw. A line across and that's going to be this line of green in the background okay and this is where our barn is going to sit right there, although it look it, it doesn't quite sit you'll see anyway. <laughs> it's going to be behind this grass right but it's going when we paint it and draw it it's going to be sitting on this line okay. All right, so the middle of our painting is about here right so my barn. It's right about in the middle the, this line of the barn is right about in the middle of the paper so go ahead and do a straight line up now if you have a ruler feel free to use it okay hopefully this marker emily or lauren is this marker dark enough for you or do i need to do it with a crayon we can see it you can okay so the way i draw the barn is to draw a series of rectangles and triangles, okay? And one trapezoid, I think it's called, all right? So I'm gonna have you draw a line across and then drop a line down. And that is going to be this area right here. We'll get to the doors and windows in a minute. This is the side of the barn. So from here, I can tell the middle for the peak is going to be in the middle of this line. All right, so this is how I get to drawing the roof line. Find the middle of this line, and you're gonna now draw a triangle, right? So the middle of that line, you feel free to draw a line straight up. You guys are gonna be erasing this. I can't, but you can, all right? So draw a straight line up, that's gonna be your peak, and now you're gonna just create two triangles. All right, so now you just drew the side, the side of the barn, all right? Now, the right side of the barn is a rectangle. Okay, so let's whoops, draw a small little rectangle. Mine is almost like a square, but that's okay. All right. Roof line is going to be parallel 
to this line. So make sure, and it's gonna be the same length. All right, I forgot to tell you that. This length here is the same as this length up here, okay? So if you want to measure it, for example, there we go, it goes from there to there. I come up here and I'm gonna only go to there. Okay, this is how to make it look in perspective a little bit, okay? There you go. Okay. Now, this line in the front is parallel to this line in the back, okay? So because this line and this line, the top horizontal part of the barn and the where the gutter would be are parallel and they're the same size, this angle should be at the same angle as this when you draw it, okay? Feel free to use a ruler to get that straight, okay? <clears throat> now, we have a little silo behind the barn. So about a little less than halfway up this ridge, I want you to draw a straight line out so it overhangs just a little bit because we are now gonna drop a straight line down, okay? So it's just a little peeking out just a little bit on the side of the barn. Oh, sorry. All right, so again, we need to decide where is the middle, just like we figured out the middle of this. The middle of our silo is right about here. It's not the middle of the line that we see, okay? So I'm going to draw a little baby line up because that roof is kind of pretty, you know, um, not a steep angle, very narrow angle, right? A very small angle. I'm gonna do that, okay? Again, we're just drawing in the general shapes. Okay, now, so my friends who are on Canvas, we are gonna sketch this out with chalk or a pencil as well, but you have to wait for this to dry first. So you guys are gonna see me draw this twice, okay? Okay, now our door, our big main um, barn doors are pretty much in the center of this square. And it doesn't go up completely to the top. So there's the top of my square right there. All right. So I'm going to go pretty big, but not all the way to the top. Okay. And there is a little tiny door over here. So you can put a little line for a door there. Put in a couple little details, little tiny windows. Don't worry about like the the mullions and the window panes just yet. We'll get to that later with coloring. But I just want you to lay this stuff out. Okay, we got a window up here, two windows up here on the same height. They're both about the same exact size and they're about the same distance up. We now, <coughs> excuse me. These are little rectangles. Try to get them as similar as you can. It's a set of five windows down the side. So I know this is the middle. So my middle window is going to be right around it. And they're tall, thin rectangles, OK? And I'm going to try and duplicate them as best I can. Feel free to measure, okay, four, five, if you want. And again, we'll put the mullions and um, sashes in later. And there's another one right there, okay? That's enough for that area, I believe. All right, we're going to gently draw in 
our grass that goes down this little hill right here starts at the silo and goes down and then in front of the barn there is another hill that comes up and over so go ahead and draw let me just get my elbow in paint okay so there's a hill here and then there's another rolling hill in front of the barn over here so now because you guys have pencil, you can erase these little lines of the barn there. Of course I can't, but that's okay, right? Trees in the background, we're just gonna put sort of the outline of where we're gonna put them. We're not gonna put a whole bunch of detail with pencil. We're gonna do more detail with crayon, okay? Or color, whatever color you're gonna do. So my trees start about halfway up into the sky and then they start to taper off and come down on an angle so that's what i'm going to do with pencil i'm going to just lightly sort of all right i know i want my trees to get smaller and smaller and smaller and do that kind of a shape and of course i did it wiggly because the tops of trees are never a straight line right and if you want you can sketch in a couple of tree trunks just to know where we're going to put it so it looks sort of like a forest okay it still kind of remind us what we're doing now with the drawing we have to draw what's in color what's in front first then we work our way back sort of in layers whereas the painting we start with the back and work forward so it's kind of the reverse now our tree everyone loves trees um we're going to start right around here and i'm going to have you again with pencil draw the tree trunks all right Yay, some people's paintings are dry already. Good. So just hang tight. We'll be right back with you. All right. If you want to pay attention to how to draw this stuff, we're going to have to draw it again. All right. So our tree trunk, uh, because that's a 16 by 20 canvas, my tree trunk is about the width of my finger. And so is that one. So I'm going to start very lightly and I'm just going to draw one pencil line. Let's see if I can do a little darker here. Uh, and then so that's this one here, right? And then I'm going to do sort of a fork off of that. Now I want to make sure that I make this one a little wider. So I'm going to make it wider right now. And then it tapers down and gets more narrow as it gets away from the ground, okay? So here is this first tree trunk here okay and now i'm going to do another one that's sort of in front of it so the bottom of the tree trunk is pretty flat and now i'm going to do another one that comes off to the side bends over right about to here before it goes up and over the barn Okay. This bends over this way, forks. This one's going to be a little thicker. Okay, so I have a, another fork in the tree here. And that's going to keep on going. Okay, so that's pretty much the main area of the tree, the tree trunk, I mean, um, for this one. And now I'm just going to very carefully, very lightly with pencil sort of draw in the overall shape of the tree so i know that it's going to only come down to about here i want to see this fork so it's going to go up a little there come around here maybe come out and again i'm literally scribbling so i'm not getting a straight line and you guys are going to do a pencil again so you can erase it okay all right we're going to go up come back down here so this one kind of goes off the page all right so that's our general shape for our tree okay 
our whole drawing really. Well, I'll show you, I'll come back to you guys in a few minutes and get you going on how to um, color it to make it look like that. All right. All right. So text me or write in the chat if yours is not dry, your painting, your canvas. All right, looks like. Looks like yeah, not dry. Okay, so Pamela, go ahead and use a hair dryer and uh, hit it hit it with a hair dryer because we're going to need to draw and if it's wet you won't be able to draw on it okay so while we're waiting for pamela i will jump over i guess and do a little bit more on the drawing okay you guys so let's do a little bit of sky so I'm going to grab, like I said, I have oil pastels here, like literally cray paws. Okay, literally like what we give to kids. Okay, so I'm going to use the blue that it comes with, the white that it comes with, and a little bit of the yellow that comes in this package. It's not a very big package, so. All right. So to get sort of a really nice blend, even if you're with crayons, you're gonna go very lightly, okay? Crayons, you can go lightly and blend your colors. You may not be able to use white uh, with a crayon, but if you have oil pastels, you can. Now the trick to making your drawing look more sophisticated is to keep the same type of brush brush stroke coloring stroke the same throughout that entire section so for example our tree anything in the tree i'm gonna have you do little circles right remember like karate kid wax on wax off right that's what you're gonna be doing little tiny circles and that gives a texture um more rounded and uneven more like leaves um but the barn you're gonna go left and right horizontal like the clapboard siding right that goes left and right little we're gonna do teeny tiny little i'd like to do like little letter v's if you will um for grass okay so it's still a scribble but it's very angular scribble that kind of um is very jagged right up and down but tiny all right so just, just a trick to um, a couple of things to do while you're coloring, to color in different, um, different ways. You're applying it differently. Sorry, I'm just peeling my crayon here so I can use the side of it. So that's the other trick too. You can use the side of your crayon. Dry now, excellent. All right, Pamela, I'll get right back to you in a second. Okay, so for the sky, if you use the side of your crayon, my, so it's the way you apply it and the pressure you use that will get you different effects, okay? So I'm going left and right using the side. I'm pinch pinching and pushing the side of my crayon into the paper. And as I get down, I want it to get it lighter and lighter. So I'm gonna put less and less pressure and very, very little, okay? I'm then going to grab, just like I did with paint, grab some white. Again, I'm peeling my crayon here. So hang on. There we go. Okay, grab some white. And I'm going to blend it. The cool thing about oil pastels is you can blend them easy. Okay. Blending that. And add a little bit of yellow. Okay. So while you guys are working on your sky over here, Hang on, put some yellow first. Very, very light. Again, side of my crayon. Very, very light. But then to make it lighter and blend it, I'm going to use some white right on top of it. And that gives the illusion, oil pastels give the illusion of paint. I don't know if you guys realize that. That's kind of fun thing about oil pastels. So. 
my paper friends, go ahead and keep coloring in that, in that way. Again, just keeping your coloring stroke in the same vein, the same direction. And then also the pressure you use. I used very, 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 very light pressure and darker pressure up here to get a darker color, okay? <clears throat> All right, so back to the canvas. I'm gonna have you guys take a pencil, okay? And we are going to, again, draw the barn. Pencil or chalk, chalk is easier to um, wipe off. Let's see who's here. All right, just checking the text messages. All right, so again, about halfway, we're gonna draw, drop a line down for our barn, and we're gonna draw a rectangle. Actually, I'm gonna do it a little shorter. There we go. Okay. You use chalk, you can wipe it off pretty easily. I'll draw on top of that later. Okay. All right, so we're gonna can you guys see that? Yeah, it looks like you can. Okay. And again, you guys are gonna do it in a way that you can erase really easily, but mine, you're gonna end up seeing my my uh, pencil lines at the end of this. So you guys can see that. Okay. All right. So now we're going to draw a find the midpoint, the middle of that line. It's about right there for me. And I'm going to draw a straight line up. Okay. You can go up as high as you want or come down a little lower. I think I'm going to come down a little lower on mine. There we go. And then I want you to drop the edges. I did mine overhang just a smidge because the roof kind of overhangs just a little bit, which we can also do when we get over there. Okay. So you started with a rectangle sitting on the green, the pale green. Found the midpoint, drew a straight line up. So now that's the top of our roof line. So I know how to draw these two angles here, okay? That way it's even on both sides. Next step is to do the side of the barn. So I'm gonna do a rectangle over here, more like a, almost a square, I guess. Depends on how high up I went. All right, so straight line across, same thing here, straight line across, but you want to make sure that, where's my, you want to make sure that this line right here that goes from the front of the barn to the back of the barn is the same size, very important, as the top of the roof, okay? Question. Barbara. <laughs> it's okay. It's just practice. The only difference is that I practice and I do this every day. Okay. So you're going to measure from the front of the barn to the back of the barn. That's about that long for me. Okay. I'm just using a paintbrush. I don't know where my ruler went. And I'm going to do the top of the roof the same exact length. And it has to be parallel. So make sure it's not up here. Make sure it's not at an angle that way. It is parallel to this line here. All right. So it's going to go to about there for me. All right, let's see. I'll draw it darker. It doesn't look like you can see it. Okay, so now I'm just going to connect these two edges and I can use my straight edge to help me get a straight line. Okay, and that's how you do the roof in perspective a little bit. Okay. All right, so now we're going to do the silo. So a little bit up our roof here, not quite halfway. I'm going to draw a horizontal line out to the right. 
And it's going to be a little bit wider than the barn because I want to drop a straight line down now to be that silo. Okay. Again, I'm going to put figure out in my mind, I know that this roof line goes over to about there. You can feel free to draw it in if you'd like. Okay, let me bring this a little closer for you guys. Okay, so the top of my silo is going to go to there. And I'm going to find the midpoint of this line. Again, kind of like we did over here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go up a little bit because this roof line is a little not even. There we go. Now it's a little even. This roof line is a lot more shallow, right? So now I can connect the lines like that. Okay, so that's the top of the roof. Hopefully that made sense. We can now, I should stop for a second and make sure everyone's good. Everyone all right? All right, I don't see anyone yelling at me, so I think we're good. <laughs> All right, so now we get to draw some of the details in the barn, like the doors and the windows. Um, and again, we're not going to do all the little mullions and window panes and all of that jazz and the sashes. We're just going to do the outline kind of like we did over there. All right, so I'm going to do the door, the main doors of the barn. It is just a simple rectangle. All right, it's closer. You can see it too. All right, we have two little windows at the top. Try to make them the same. There is actually a little tiny, not tiny, it's not tiny, but it's, um, it's still red though. It's not, um, you can see this. Let me see. I can't take that down. I have it clipped up. But right there, there is a door. Um, but it's all painted red, so you can't really see it unless you're really zoomed in on the photo. Okay. <clears throat> but you can put it there if you'd like. And then there's another door on the side over here. This one we can see because it is outlined in white. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Up top here, we have two square windows pretty similar. Actually, they're identical. Okay. Try to get them as identical as you can. Okay. We have tall, thin, rectangular window over here. And then we have five going across here. Now, I'm just gonna put this down here to draw. It's a little easier for me to get at it here. Okay, so right underneath this window, there's another rectangular window that starts the line of five windows. These are all identical. So you're gonna to want to try and space them accordingly. If you end up having an extra square in there or an extra rectangle, that's okay. Nobody's gonna know. Barns can pretty much be anything. It's important not to go bigger as you go back, okay? If you want to fill in the space and you like, oh no, I should have made my windows bigger or smaller, go back and make them bigger or smaller. If you want it to look like this, otherwise it's going to look like a, uh, a totally different window put in on the side of a barn, okay?
So now we get to paint this. This is where I wanted you guys to get going. So go ahead and erase the lines we don't want. So this upside down letter T over here. I don't want that because this is all going to be red. And I don't want this in that. Okay. So. Right. You guys ready to paint them? <laughs> Once you have your barn drawn, this is where we're going to paint. Now, the side of the barn, this side here is darker than the front of the barn. So the front of the barn, I'm using straight red right out of the bottle. This side of the barn, I'm using red with a little bit of brown to make it look darker. Okay, because it does in the photo, it's sort of in the shadows. So I'm making to the two planes of the building, two different colors, right? I'm using for this step, I'm going to use both of these, all right? So this is one of my round, my number six round brush with a point. And this is the detail brush with the point. Of course, the detail is to get into the tiny little areas. Now, like I said over here, the way you color and the way you make your mark is important. The way you paint is important also. So I don't want you just kind of scribbling willy nilly and painting however, like we did in the sky, which is fine for the sky. But for this, you're going to want to get your edges down, right? So outline, let's say just the top triangle here, right? Then as you as it's wet, you want to move it while it's wet. I'm going to go left and right, just like I would see on the siding. The siding goes left and right. So I'm going to also go here, left and right between the windows. As horizontal as you can get it and as straight of a line as you can get it. Okay, do you see how I'm applying the paint? All right. Over here, I'm going to also go left and right. So you're going to do this bright red on the front. I accidentally went into it. That's all right. I'll cover it back up later with white. And go left to right to make it look like siding. So if you do see your brush strokes, it's okay. It gives the illusion that it's the siding of a barn. Okay. I like to go one little section at a time. As you noticed, I only did the top edges of like the triangle, right? Um, before I went left to right. I don't want the paint to dry, like that first line that I did down the edge. I didn't really want it to dry without me smudging it and smearing it across to make it look more like siding. So I'm gonna come down here. I come down a little, then go to the side. Can you hear? Okay. All right. Come down a little on this side and then pull it to the left. I'm going to go around my door so I just realized I drew crooked. <laughs> so I'm going to try and straighten it out now. I'm going to do this little small section over here. If you notice, I'm, <coughs> excuse me, only doing a vertical line just a little bit. While it's wet, I'm going to go back and forth between it. 
So you guys are gonna take your time and you're going to continue this process on the front and the side, okay? And again, though, the side of the barn is only gonna be, I mean, it's gonna be red with brown, okay? I know this barn's gonna take a few minutes, that's why I wanted to get you guys going on it. And I'm gonna leave my chalk marks there and I'm going up to my chalk line, <clears throat> not necessarily over it. I mean, if I go over it a little bit, that's fine, but I am gonna leave a very hairline um, area very teeny tiny area um, that is not painted red. So that way when I go back in and paint my white line, it'll be much brighter. Because if you paint white over red, yeah, you'll see it, but I want part of it to be really, really bright. So I'm leaving it blank, as you can see here, okay? But again, it's not the end of the world. If you accidentally paint over it, it's fine. The white will cover it later. So if you notice my door, what, where are we? Here we are. This door, I left that line of my chalk. The gray chalk is still there. Can, well, you guys can kind of see that, okay? Go ahead and do the same thing with the rest. That line of my door there is a little cockeyed, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna do my barn pretty quick right now. Don't feel you need to keep up with me. I'm just gonna get back over to the drawing here. You guys take your time, keep going. You will see through your paint. That's okay, because you can always come back after class, which I'm gonna do on that also, and do a second layer, okay? So if your paint is kind of see-through, depends on what kind of brand of paint you bought some paints really see through some paint is not so if it is see through don't fret you can always add a second layer i'm giving you the tools now on how to paint it so you can always come back and do it again on top all right so i'm just gonna quickly some red down here going in horizontal fashion to look like siding. I accidentally went on to my green. That's all right. I'm going to cover that up later anyway. And that's a beautiful thing about acrylics. You make a mistake, let it dry, paint over it. You don't have to worry about it being forever because it doesn't have to be forever. I don't even know how many layers upon layers upon layers I've done on some of my canvases. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm always, I always go back into the studio. I'm like, yeah, I don't like that one. I'll repaint over it. So I've got like four or five different paintings on one canvas. So, but some canvases I have just one painting and it's got, you know, 10 layers maybe because I wanted to add depth or I wanted to add more texture or I wanted to change the color. That's the beauty of acrylics. You can always go back and add more, okay? I just suggest that it be dry first so you don't make a muddy mess, which I've also done, by the way. If you're trying to do it when it's wet, it'll just turn like brown, muddy, and you'll get frustrated. All right, so just dry it. That's where the hairdryer comes in handy. Okay, so really quickly, I'm going to do the side of the barn. Like I said, I'm going to take a chunk of red and a chunk of brown, and I'm making a dark red color. Oh, sorry, a dark red color for the side of the barn. Like a wine color, I guess. Almost. More burgundy, I guess it is. Okay, again. Now the trick to getting um, details, like this is all kind of detail work. Um, to get better lines, 
you're going to want to hold your brush like a pencil okay so you know in the beginning we were out here holding it way back here and we're painting the sky really big brush strokes that's fine but when you're doing detail work choke up on it get your hand your fingers down onto the metal part and hold it like a pencil okay feel free to rest your hand down in fact i want you to rest your hand down on something that's why i'm leaning in on it because trying to paint out here a detail without resting my hand on something I'm not going to be very steady. Resting your hand down, thinking your, of your paintbrush like a pencil and drawing with it like it's a pencil is going to be your best bet, especially when you're using a detailed brush like that little baby brush. Okay. I'm going to do this here. Go right across the top. The other thing when you're loading your brush, trick to that is to try to keep your paint on the bottom part of your bristles. It's a good rule of thumb that when you're loading your paintbrush to only load the bottom part. Try not to get paint up to the metal part of your brush, right? I barely have it there. I'm not, not a really good example, but there's the metal, there's the bristles. Try not to get the paint up and into the metal part. Way to do that, or not to do that, I should say, is to put your paintbrush into the side of the pile of paint. Don't dip it on the top, okay? Go into the side so you're always pushing against the palette as you're going to grab paint. You can spin your brush and pull it out what that'll do is it'll make sure you don't have too much paint on your bristles, okay? And it'll also turn your bristles into a nice fine point. So especially when you're using this little baby brush, you're gonna wanna do this trick. Go into the side of the paint, spin your brush and pull out, okay? Then rest your hand down and think of it like a pencil. So you're going to draw instead of, paint. Hopefully that'll help. That's a kind of a little trick that um, I like to share with my painters to get much better results. And take your time. Some painters are really, really quick. I'm one of them. And some painters are really, really slow. There is no wrong way to do this. So again, if, I, if this feels rushed for you, please don't get stressed out, okay? Um, I just happen to be a fast painter in by nature. I, I just always have been. Um, so I try very hard to keep that in mind and give the, you guys the time you need. But even then, when I give you guys the time you need, most of you, there will be some of you that need more time and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. If you know that going in, you won't be as stressed and you just know, say, okay, I'll just catch it on replay later. I'll do my best, but for now, I'm just gonna, go as fast as I can and I'll catch it later. Okay, so you guys work on your barn, doing it horizontally, like I just showed you red on the front, a darker red on the side. And I'm going to get over now to the drawing. All right, so we did the sky blended from blue down to yellow, and it's all the pressure. So if you're using a pencil, very, very, very light, light pressure will help you blend colors better. Same thing with a crayon. Okay, the darker you push the crayon, the darker the color will be. All right, so <clears throat> let's do a little bit of the tree trunk and branches, just a few. You don't need a lot up here. You don't really see a lot. All right, I'm going to do, so this tree here, I did brown, black, and gray. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to grab a brown. Actually, I'm going to grab a darker brown. There you go. Darker brown, black, and gray. Okay, so I'm using, I don't know if you guys can see that. That's a brown, that's a gray, and there's a black. Okay. So I'm going to start by going in the direction that the bark would go, which is starting from the ground and going 
up, okay? And then as I get up and in here, I am gonna almost disappear the line into nothingness, okay? But down here, I'm really gonna color it hard. So we should have done those trees first, silly me. Where's my kids at school? Because I'm also an, an art teacher at elementary school because it's a Miss B. Okay. So I'm just gonna do this one first. Then I'm gonna show you how to do the trees in the back. Then we'll come back. All right. So if you do this kind of scribble up and down uneven lines that are more in the direction of the tree trunk, and scribbling up and then back, scribbling up and then back. It'll look a lot like tree bark. Okay, so I did the brown. Now I'm kind of scratching and scribbling in some gray. I don't know if you can see that. I can't get this down. This one's hard to pull down. All right. And a little bit of black in there too. Let's see if I can get another piece of paper up close and I'll show you what that looks like. So if you do scribble up and down, scribble up and down, and there's our bark, okay? I'm kind of wiggling up and wiggling down. And I'm going to come back in and add some gray in there to fill in. I should have my clipboard. I forgot it. <laughs> okay. Some more lines on top. And then you can add another layer of color the same way. This time I'm going to do black sort of on the underside so I added a little bit of black to the right side of that but this is what I'm doing inside the tree trunk okay I'm gonna jump now I'm gonna sorry I should have done the background first but I wanted to I don't know why I went to the tree trunks first but that's okay so let's go back to do these trees back here first thing we're gonna do is add a couple of kind of a Lick, if you will, for the tree trunks. Okay, so start down and you're going to flick up sort of all different shapes and sizes, some real thin ones, some a little thicker. And this is going to be just give us the illusion that it's kind of like a forest over there. Okay, just a couple, you don't need a lot. Then we're going to get some green and brown, some dark brown. Okay, we want these trees to recede and go back. So I'm going to make them a different color than the front tree. Okay, so this is green and brown. So I'm going to use here these two. Oh, it's kind of hard to see with this camera. All right, there you go. Hopefully you can see that. It's a dark brown. Okay. And again, I'm going to, like I said, it's all in the direction of your brush stroke, your coloring. So I am literally scribbling, okay? Scribble with a lot more rounded edges. I'm gonna go right up to the barn. I'm gonna go in between my tree here. Go all different directions of scribble. You can do some lighter, some darker. So I'm gonna now kind of go and fill in. I don't. Want, I want to get rid of all of the white of my paper. So I'm gonna do some very light areas of green by light pressure. Okay. All the way down to the grass and all the way up to the building. Okay, I'm gonna blend in a little bit of that brown. Actually, you know what? I might change colors. Let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna use this brown instead. I think it's a more of a reddish brown, but it doesn't really matter. 
what colors. We're just gonna make sure that this tree is a different green than these trees back here, okay? So add a slightly darker scribble again. If you're using crepas like this, they blend really nicely. And you can actually use your finger and smudge them and you can use the crayons, the um, crepas and smudge. Okay. Fill in all the little there areas and cracks and spaces. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Bet you thought you weren't gonna scribble ever again. <laughs> And yet here we are creating artwork via scribbles. I actually do a lot of scribbles in my paintings. All right, down here, I'm gonna go vertical. Again, give the illusion of tree trunks. This is gonna be kind of blurry, okay? We want this to recede and go away. So we're not gonna put a lot of detail into it, okay? If you wanted to add a different shade of brown, you can, or a different shade of green, you can. Um, but again, this green is going to be green with yellow, whereas this is more green with brown. Okay. And now, if you guys are ready, also, you can do your barn if you would like. Same way. You're going to go left and right to give the illusion of um, sighting, okay? Now, after you get the red down, you can feel free to come back and add, especially on this side, add some brown on top of it. So if you are using crayon or pencil, you can layer it very easily. Okay? And I always tell my kids this, I wanna see color within color. You add more than one color to something, it makes it more sophisticated. Okay, whoops. So your coloring book pages will never look the same because you're gonna add texture and multiple colors per section. All right, so I'm just going to do this barn here. I'm going to take that reddish brown. So I have a reddish brown and I have a dark brown. I'm going to use the reddish brown color. I know it's kind of hard to see with this light. Um, just a little to scratch across some horizontal lines to make it look more like siding. Okay, so I'm putting that texture back in. Okay. And then the siding on the right is going to have a lot more brown. Sorry, I got to peel my crayon again. No. Okay. This is going to have a lot more brown on this side, left and right. Okay, so there's my base again going in the direction the siding is going in. And I'm gonna use my darker brown on this side and I'm going to add, again, horizontal lines into it to blend my color and make this red darker red. Always come back in and add red back on top to smudge and smear and blend your colors together, especially if they're crepe pop. Like I said, you can do multiple, multiple layers. And 
nice heavy coat. Okay, and that's how you make your siding look a little darker on one side than the other. Okay, so go ahead and do the barn door. Uh, <coughs> and everything else red over there. Okay, how are we doing? Oh, someone's got a question. <laughs> You're welcome and thanks for joining us. All right. Let's jump back over here. Hopefully you guys are good. I'm gonna jump back over to the canvas and paint the silo, okay? Hopefully the painters are done. So the silo I'm gonna do with mommy brush. So paint, clean your mommy brush, paint the bottom of your can, wipe it off on the edge of your cup or can whatever you got going on dry it off on your napkin and we're going to create a color that is brown but a different kind of brown than what we have so i'm going to have you guys do red and brown similar to what we had on the side of our barn but we're going to add some yellow so it's more orangey it's more like a brick color okay so red yellow and brown is going to give that brick red kind of a color okay. more yellow in here there we go and again remember what i said to spin your brush and pull it back it makes your bristles go back together and it makes sure you don't have too much paint globbed on your paintbrush oh <laughs> okay i'm sorry we lost you but yes it's recorded you'll be able to watch it later okay um all right so our silo again it's going to go left and right it's a bunch of bricks so the bricks look um horizontal so we're going to start here and go left to right to paint in our silo But down your edge just a little bit and then make a horizontal line to give it sort of the texture. Now we're also going to add in a little bit of shadowing. So if you notice the barn sits in front of the silo so it does cast a shadow onto the silo. So all we're going to do is add a little bit of brown right down the edge here straight brown dark brown just get my texture back in horizontal texture left left and right right down to the ground there we go so once you get your orangey kind of color in, you are going to now add just a little line of brown, kind of drag it across just a little bit, maybe do it up here too, a little shallow, drag a brown line down, but also drag it across. Too much paint on my paintbrush. And drag it across a little to make it look more rounded. Okay. All right, it's a little bit too much brown there that I can see. So I'm gonna come back with my orange, my orangey brown silo color. And this time, drag it from right to left sort of blend it in and push that brown back okay again if you're having trouble with your paints if they're too transparent and see-through 
just get one coat down and you can always come back later once it's dry and add a second coat. Okay, and that's how to make it look like it's this building is in front of that one. Okay. And wash your brush again. The roof. Right. So I'm gonna give you guys enough time to kind of do your silo. So maybe I'll jump over on the uh, the the drawing while you guys are finishing up your silo, and then we'll get to the roofs. Okay. All right, so our coloring, same thing. We're gonna do red, um, like red and yellow make orange. So I'm gonna do orange. This time I do have orange over here. I'm gonna do a little bit of orange and brown on my brick. Eh, red, orange, and brown, I think is what I'm gonna do. The colors that I have in my palette. You guys can't hear the same, but there's orange at the bottom, red and brown. I'm trying to get a good angle on the light here. Okay, so start with a little bit of red. I'm going to lay down a coat of red here, medium um, pressure or lighter really using the side of the crayon, but I'm going left to right. Okay. I'm going to add in a couple of lines of orange again, left to right to make it emulate bricks. And then I'm going to come in with this reddish brown color and do it really heavy at the edge because that's going to be my shadow right uh, right up to the barn roof which i might even do it darker than that now that i'm looking at it i think i am all right so i'm going to change my mind i'm going to do this reddish brown horizontal left to right again to make it look more like bricks fill in this And then I'm going to take my really dark brown and do my edge down this side. There we go, much better. Draw a line down to give the shadow, but then again, just like I did with my paint, I'm going to kind of smush this shadow to the right a little bit to sort of blend it into that brick wall, that brick silo. Okay. And if it's too much, come back with your red and blend it back in again, or your orange. Just go back and forth, just work it. Okay, there's your stylo. Okay. All right, so hopefully you're done with the root of the silo on the paint side. So I'm going to jump back over here and do um, roof. The roof of the barn is a very dark gray okay so it's black with a little bit of white the roof of the silo is add a little brown to it just to make it look a little different all right and again i'm going to use my mommy brush I just realize my drawing is off sorry it's kind of bugging me here we go All right, so black and white. Black and just a little bit of white. Okay, so it's a very dark gray on the roof. It's not sharp black, an off black. And you're literally just going to go left to right on this one. Okay, like we've been doing everything else. These are, again, um, the way that they lay them in on the roof is in straight horizontal lines, so that's how we're going to paint it. We try and leave a little edge here of where I leave my charcoal line, my drawing line, a little bit open, exposed. Again, if you don't do it, not a big deal. We can always paint white over it. I'm trying to leave it there to show you guys. Okay.
Now, if you want, while this is wet, you can streak in a little bit of a slightly lighter gray, like I just did here, to give, again, more of that illusion that these are horizontal rows of asphalt shingles. All right, so I'll show you. You can streak in just a little bit of lighter gray. Erin, can you share what kind of brushes you're using? Yeah, so I have, let me just clean this one for you and I'll show it to you. So when you go to the art store, you're gonna wanna look for acrylic um, paint brushes because they have synthetic bristles, okay? So these are all white nylon bristles and they're made for acrylic paints and they're made to be thicker and stiffer to be able to hold acrylic paints better than a watercolor. Watercolor brushes are softer and they bend easier um, and they hold more water. Uh, oil brushes are more um, hog hair. They're more animal hair, so they're more coarse than these. These are pretty smooth white nylon uh, synthetic brushes is what they're called. You can get them anywhere. Either the price points vary greatly. If you're wanting to start painting, you're going to want to get like a middle of the road kind of um, paintbrush. Um, let's see here. So I'm using a number 10 flat. It's about an inch wide, but it's got a flat line across the top. Okay, so it's a number 10 flat. I'm using both of these are considered a number. Oops, I just put it in the paint. Number six round. Now, this is an old brush that I've used for many, many years. So it's really kind of frayed. It's seen better days, right? This used to look like this, but I used it so much and after so many washings, it just kind of spreads out a little bit. But it makes for really good uh, pouncing brushes, which is what we're gonna do for um, the tree, this big tree when we're done, okay? So that's a number six when it, when it first comes out of the store, <laughs> All right? Nice and pointy. Then the last one is a number one round. Again, it's a nice point brush. Sorry, I just touched the paint, so I'm watching it. Okay, I hit the blue paint by accident, sorry. Um, so it, it too is a round pointed end. It's not flat, it's not a filbert or an, a rounded, it's, it's, it's called round, okay? So the tip is a point. All right, so hopefully that helps you. And if you're gonna go um, buying brushes, that's that's a pretty good set to start with. Um, it's not a fan brush. There's lots and lots of different kinds of brushes, but if you're just starting, you really only need three, a big, a medium, and a little uh, detail brush, okay? Hopefully that helps. All right, uh, my brushes are too cheap or I'm too vigorous because the tiny brush hairs all over my canvas. So yes, yeah, so the paintbrush hairs um, is because it's a inexpensive brush. The more expensive brush you have, the it won't happen. That won't happen. Okay. So, um, a decent sized brush like this little baby brush here. I think I spent three dollars on it, two dollars on it, and this I use in my classes. So this is not even a fine artist brush. This is a middle of the road, student grade brush. So two or three for this one. I think I spent four dollars on the medium brush that i had and probably about ballpark six dollars on this one okay that's a good average medium price um do i have a brand um i like to go to the store um it's called blick b-l-i-c-k i get it online there's also one in plainville connecticut don't know where you live but um this is blick scholastic and get a good decent medium run of the mill let's see here can see that okay blick i see the number six on it and then scholastic okay again this i think ran me about four bucks ballpark um, but there's lots of good brushes out there like if you go to like say michael's um you can find 
you know, don't get the cheapest one. And then look at how expensive the most expensive one is of like, they say the number six round. So you'll know ballpark where to kind of go with your pricing. Um, but yeah, that's what I use for the, for the business. So all of my painters use those kinds of brushes um, when they're at my classes. Hopefully that'll help. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so let's get back. Any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. My dog is back in here, so hopefully she won't jump on the paint. All right. So this, we're going left and right. And you're going to have a slightly lighter gray um, to give you that horizontal detailing. All right. Now, the roof of the silo is going to, I'm going to add a little bit of brown to it. Still using that medium mommy brush, the number six round. Um, and I'm going to add to that gray, that dark gray, I'm going to add some brown to it. Mm -mm. Oop, too dark, too much black. I needed to mix more paint. I just made it too dark. Hang on. And then you're just going to fill this in. Okay? There's no real wrong way to do this one. I like to start at the top. Once I get all my color down, I like to give it a texture where I start at the top and I'll come down as if it you're sliding down the roof because you know the roof goes like this all the way around. So that's how I'll draw my lines. I'll draw the lines starting at the top, going down on an angle to the left, gradually come straight down in the middle and then I'll go to the right as I'm over there. Okay, so that's how I'll do that roof. Now, while we have this color on our brush, you can either do this dark color with brown in it, or you can make a dark gray, like the roof color here, doesn't matter either or, color in your windows. So your windows are not black, they are a dark gray or a dark gray with brown color. Okay, I'm just gonna color these in Again, holding my brush as if it's a pencil, choking up on it. Okay. Knowing I'm going to be putting in all of the white molding all the way around it later to clean up all these edges. We have this color wet on our palette. I want to use this color with the baby brush to do this line of our roof. All right? And then I'm going to let you guys continue working on this while I jump over and do the paper drawing. All right? So just wanted to tell you one more spot to put this darker shade. All right? This kind of roof color. All right? You're going to do right up this side of our barn. This is the overhang of the roof that you're painting. You're painting the underside of the roof right now, so you know. All right, we'll come back with white later on top of this when we get there, okay? Oh yeah, we have this line too, my bad, forgot. <clears throat> the only other place to do it is here on the door. Can you see me? Okay, the door to make this piece look like it's pushed into the building a little bit, we're going to put a shadow here of the same dark color, right? And then on this side, so the top of the barn door, this big, huge section, and the left side of this big, huge section. We'll get the white going later, okay? So the windows and then top and left and also the overhang or the uh, other side of the roof okay the underside of the roof there 
All right, so you guys keep working on that. Wash my brush. Dry it off. Okay. Right. We're going to jump over here and do our roof. Same way, guys. It's the same thing. So I'm going to do layer in a medium pressure black. All right, so if you ever have any painting questions, you guys, feel free to shoot me an email or you can send it to Emily or Lauren. They're gonna give you guys um, how to contact them. They've been really, really good through the years of passing along an email of a question. I'm happy to answer your questions. So if your painting is coming along and you get stuck, send me a fit photo, you know, send it to Emily. Again, she'll send you, um, at the end of this, we'll give you the contact information, but send it over and say, I'm stuck, what do I do? I'm happy to help you guys. Also happy to help any um, any questions on what to buy, where to buy it. Um, I also buy my paints at Blick. Um, so you guys know, I love getting their Blick acrylics, it's called. And it's a good medium, middle of the road kind of uh, paint that I use in all my painting classes with adults and with kids. So. It's not the cheapest and it's not the most expensive. It's a good medium, you know, a starter paint. So um, that's kind of what I'm attached to. But again, just feel free to ask any questions at any point in time. OK, all right. So let's color over here. Start with black and I'm going to use the side of the crayon. Okay, Same way, but I'm going to go left and right because I want to get that texture to make it look like roof tiles. Okay. And then I'm going to put in also darker, heavier lines going across to, again, give the illusion of these roof tiles, right? The asphalt shingles. Okay. Since I have a gray crayon, I'm going to use it. Where did it go, though? There it is. Okay. And I'm going to kind of also add some lines of gray in there. Always left and right to give it that texture. It's not just a flat color coloring in a shape. Okay. It's always adding texture and adding multiple colors to make it more of a sophisticated drawing. If you don't have oil pastels, I highly recommend them because they work a lot like oil paints. Okay, you can blend, you can smudge, especially if you do a lot of layers with them like I'm doing right now. Okay, it'll give you that, um, a lot of really cool texture, real thick um, application of, of color. Okay. I'm going to do it again over here. So I'm going to do black with brown this time, right? So I'm going to start with a layer of brown. Coloring that in, and then I'm going to add some black. Where did it go? There it is. In the direction from the point down to the edge. I'm touching my sky with dirty fingers. Whoops. That's the one bad thing about oil pastels, and I'm sorry about that. But you're going <laughs> to have a little bit of smudge marks from your fingers if you're not careful like I just did. So I'm going to try to erase them, but I'm not going to take the time right now, but I would go back in. You could scratch it off so you know if you have a mistake and scratch off most of the oil stick and then reapply your color, okay? And you'll get rid of most of it, but I'm not going to take the time for that right now. All right. Don't forget your doors. Don't forget your windows that are going to be um, a dark gray. So you can start with gray and then add a little bit of black to darken it down if you wanted. Okay. But we definitely wanted a slightly darker color rather than a lighter color. And I'm going to add a little bit of black on top just to darken it down. Okay. 
I just didn't want it black, 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 black. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, let's come over here and we're going to do these trees in the background. Okay. And then after we do the trees, we can do the big tree. Right. So trees in the background, kind of like we colored them, we're going to also do the same thing here, keeping in mind that these trees over here are going to be a little shorter, and then we're going to get a little bigger over here, okay? So I'm just going to grab my medium mommy brush, okay? And I'm literally going to just flick up a few lines Shorter lines over here. I just grabbed red by accident. It's all right. All right, some shorter lines over here. And I'm not going to be doing a lot of tree branches. I'm just doing the illusion that these are trees in the woods back there, right? Just kind of in the back. So just little shorter ones over here, a little longer, taller ones as you get to the left. Okay, and if you want to use your baby brush on this, you can do that too. You guys don't have to listen to what I am doing. If you're more comfortable with a different brush, go for it. Oh, I'm sorry, these are brown. <laughs> Thought I said that, maybe I didn't. Um, so brown paint, the tree trunks, okay? Mommy brush, tree trunks are the dark brown. And I'm going to show you kind of what my trees look like right now. And it's a hot mess. I want to make sure they're at least all on the ground here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, watch. Check out how messy. It's a hot mess of lines, right? So don't overthink this. Just and do some vertical brown lines. And again, the paint runs out, that's totally okay too. Like if you notice my paint kept running out, right? I only had a little bit of paint on my brush and I ran out. That's all right, because all of these are gonna get mushed in here in a minute to make it look like just a, a, a bunch of trees in a forest, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna wash my brush, put it to the side. This is where I'm going to pick up that big fluffy brush, an old paintbrush, a cheap paintbrush, because you're going to be pouncing on it. If you don't have one, you can still use that mommy brush. That's fine. I suggest a brush that is definitely round at the tip if you can. Um, and I'm using an older brush again because I'm pouncing on it. And it's not the best thing to do to bristles over and over and over again. Um, so if you have an older brush or a cheaper brush, this is the time to, to pull it out, okay? So just kind of like Bob Ross, right? Happy little trees. That's what we're going to be doing right now. This color is green and brown. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth between the two as I'm going. So it mushes up here, all right? And it kind of blends on the canvas. Now, the shape that I want to do starts here, goes up a little bit, and then comes down, okay? And it comes down a little bit right around where the roof line is, a little under that. Okay, you can kind of see it right there. You can see it right there, all right? So start by pouncing into your paint. So this is how I load this kind of a brush, okay? You're gonna go pound. This time you are gonna come from the top. And I'm gonna pounce it off a little bit. I don't wanna have it drip all over me. And you're literally pouncing, okay? Now, in order to get different marks, you're going to need to spin your brush around a little bit. So you're not getting the same exact stamp kind of effect. Okay. So I'm going to make sure that I have it kind of going. I'm trying to get different edges too. The harder you push, the bigger the mark. 
up around the edges, you can do teeny tiny baby little dots very carefully to make the edge of your trees more um, realistic. Okay, so you see how delicate they are around the edges here? Teeny tiny pouncing. In the middle, I'm gonna do big pouncing because I wanna cover this whole area. I'm gonna come down to about here, okay? Because these trees recede off in the distance. So they're gonna get smaller and smaller the further away they get. And that's kind of the illusion that I'm wanting to go for. Teeny tiny pounces on the edges. Rotating your brush so you get different marks every time. Okay, you see that? And then as we come down and in here, I'm gonna get bigger and bigger just to get the coverage. And I am going to take this pouncing all the way down to the grass, okay? Now, you guys are looking at this and you're going, oh dear God, this looks like just a hot mess of dots, a hot mess of paint. That's okay, totally normal. What I need you to keep in mind, you're sitting six inches from your canvas or 12 inches from your canvas, you're never going to be this close again. So what it looks like up close is completely different from what it looks like sitting on a wall. So in order to assess what you really have in front of you, what it really looks like, you need to do one of two things. One, take a photo of it with your phone and look at it on your phone. It'll shrink it down and give you a new perspective. Or two, walk away from your canvas about 20 feet then look at it and assess it okay so don't be too critical on yourself on what these mush mushy little brush strokes look like it's the overall effect you're gonna get later all right so i'm gonna load this up with green being very small pounces around the edges then I'm going to go add green and brown on my brush at the same time, right? So I got green, now I'm going to grab a little bit of brown, and I'm going to start pouncing that in. Now, I want this to be a different color that's, than the tree. That's why I'm adding the brown to this part, okay? And I'm also doing that because I want it to recede and go in the distance. Right, get close to that. It's okay if you get kind of close to your barn or even go all the way up to the barn. We're gonna paint the white on the barn after all this. So we can redefine your barn edge. Cause I just noticed I just tapped some green onto the red a little bit, but I know that at the end of the day, it's gonna be white, so it's okay. All right, so get some brown going in here. Again, small little dots, taps near the edges, heavier taps. In the middle. And feel free to let some of that green of the first layer pop through. Feel free to let some of the sky pop through a little bit in spaces. Okay. I'm just wanting to make a dark green. My green is pretty see-through and that's okay. I don't mind that. It gives the illusion that it's the daytime as opposed to really, really dark, dark green that you can't see through. We're going to cover over a little bit of the bottom of these trees with this green grass here in a little bit. All right. All right. So that's what it looks like close up. A hot mess of smushy dots. <laughs> okay, so I did smaller dots on the edges or pouncing smaller little lighter pouncing on the edges and a little bit heavier as I got through here, okay? But again, 
I made sure not to just do one solid color, right? As you can see, it's a little darker in some areas, a little lighter in some areas. Okay, so you got to want that modeled kind of effect, okay? All right, so you guys keep working on that. This red barn is driving me crazy with the door not painted colored, so hang on here. I'm going to jump back over here. Finish my door again, left and right. Forgot my windows, right? I think I did gray first and then a little bit of black on them. Now, if you're using crayons, you don't have white. So you're going to need to leave a little bit of white space or you can always grab white paint and come back in with a little bit of paint nail polish white nail polish if you have that um, house paint ceiling paint you can always use that you can also use white out if you want to get white back in on your um on your coloring page here all right there we go i need to get some brown i think i did the this brown here all right there we go all right okay all right um trees over here let's finish this tree the green the brown and gray and black right in the direction the bark He's going to go. I'm just going to go up into the tree just a little bit. All right, so I did that dark brown. And now we're going to streak in some more of the green, gray, excuse me, and a little bit of black. So this black here, I'm also going to define where the front tree is in front of the back tree. Okay. We kind of gave that little black line between the two. All right. When you guys are ready. I'm gonna have you do peeling my my crayon again. Sorry. Here we go. I'm gonna have you do the green grass over here. Okay. I'm using the side, I'm doing a bright green to start for the whole thing. Okay. Then I'm going to add a little bit of Where is it? Oop. Hang on. It's like a, it's like a hay color. Okay? I just dropped it. Sorry. It's like a, it's a yellow, mustard yellow, hay kind of a color. All right, and I'm going to add that a little bit into my green. It is a yellow, so it blends really nicely with green. But it takes the green down a notch so that it's not such a Crayola green, if you will. All right. All right. Feel free to add whatever kind of color you want. Here we go. I'm going to do a lighter green now. There we go. So now I'm doing this brighter green. Pretty heavy on the top of this part of the hill. So you're going to have sort of a couple of different shades of green, right? The back part of the hill, I'm going to add a little bit of the dark brown color on top. Just lightly, and then I'm going to come back in and blend it with that light green color again. Okay. I'm going to use this to be consistent because it's the same grass, some of it's just in the dark, in the shadow back there. All right, so I'm using that bright green as the last smudging color for this oil pastel. All right, so just kind of mix it up a little bit, blend your colors, 
a little bit more brown in there. And I'm gonna put a shadow of my tree also here. Maybe I'll blend that. All right. That's how you're gonna get your grass over there to look like paint. <clears throat> all right, we need to do grass over here now. All right, hopefully you guys are done. It's all right, looks like we're gonna go a little longer. Going as fast as I can, ladies. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go back to the daddy brush, the big flat, one inch flat brush, okay? We're gonna make a green that is green with white and brown. The white is gonna give us coverage and to block, okay? Um, so the green is see-through, the white is not. So you need to mix the two together so the green will become opaque, okay? So you start with the light green. And I'm gonna add some brown to it because I want it to be more like that. So I may have to do this in two layers, but that's okay. Green, white, and brown. Now, this hill does go in front of the barn a little bit and dips down. So we're gonna go one width of the brush. If you're on a canvas like mine, you're gonna go into the trees that we just did a little bit, okay? By one width of the brush. And then as you get in front of the barn, we're gonna dip down. to this level, okay? Because it's very hilly over there. Okay. And again, if it's too see-through for you, let it dry, add a second coat later, okay? So I had it and I dipped it down. Now I'm gonna bring it and do less brown, more green, still having white in there. So it's still white, brown, and green, but the ratios are different. This time it's gonna have a little bit more green. So just pull some more green into that pile of paint you already have. And we are going to come across, this is our second layer of grass. That's gonna go right up to the barn here. Oh, this one's supposed to go down too, sorry, my bad. I forgot we have that gray green in the background. Right. Trick about paint, you wanna get rid of something, you can wipe it off immediately. If it's still wet paint, just like I did. I dragged it, same, just wiped it right off, okay? So this is a second hill. This is gonna come across, and then at the end of the silo, it dips down, right? And this is a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna add a little bit of white in there. There we go and then fill the rest of this in. And it's okay if it gets a little streaky. That's what mine is up top too, okay? A little bit of white back in there as my green is wet. Smudge it and smear it. One nice long pass. We'll get a nice long, smooth brush stroke, okay? So the grass in the way far back, this little tiny triangle is very light. This is a little brighter, and then this up here is a little darker, right? We now get to, I'm gonna jump over here, finish this off. Um, oh, maybe not, I gotta do white and then the green tree. All right, sorry. <laughs> let's add white. If you have an oil pastel like I do, let's add some white to our edges of our barn, the white around the windows, on the edge of our roof here, okay? You can draw your white in, okay? It depends on what you're using. I don't know if you're using crayon or you're using um, pencil. 
right? Add a little bit of white detailing just to brighten it up just a little bit. So you're going to have white on the edges of our barn, the vertical lines right down the corners. Okay. Now it is blending a little bit with my red that I already have going on. So I may have to do a couple of coats. Clean off my crayon. Get a nice white edge at the bottom. Oh, just broke it. The bottom edge of the roof. All right, front edge of the roof. Almost every line that you drew with pencil is basically going to be outlined now with white. Well, with the exception of our guide lines, like this upside down T that I have going on here, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Let's see, let me try this. We can scratch off the red and then draw in the white. There you go, that'll come out better. So if you're getting a lot of pink like I was, feel free to, with your nail or with something else, scratch off the crayon, the oil pastel, and then you can add back in a sharper white line, okay? Last step for this puppy is going to be your tree. Just like we did scribbles back here, you're gonna do the same exact scribbles up here. This time you're gonna do green, that lighter green, like a lime green and yellow. So green and yellow, essentially. I gotta peel this one too. Okay, green and yellow on this one. And it's all, again, I'm just gonna do one little section here, okay? Start with your green, scribble, scribble, scribble. It'll take a while. Oops. All right, then on top of that, you're gonna scribble. If you have like that lime green, you can add that in. If you have only have yellow, you can add yellow in whatever you have to make this lighter than the trees in the background, okay? You can even, if you wanted to, scribble in some white to make it lighter. Okay, so that's how you're gonna continue this tree. I like to do that nice, put down the green, just drop it in paint. Put it down, put down that medium, or excuse me, the regular straight up green first. This green, okay. Then I find a chunk, like this chunk right here. I will highlight it on one side by making just one side of it lighter. So this is where I'll add the white on this side. Whereas the rest of it is just going to be two shades of green and a yellow, right? Put the whole thing. Right on top of the tree branches, which should not be too, too far up the tree. Okay, the green. There's my other green. Start with the base. And highlight just down one side. You want to get really crazy, you can get a little bit of brown around the bottom to just redefine this chunk of tree. It's like a bunch of branches all together. Okay. There you go. If you wanted to sort of blend that back in. Okay. So that's how I would do that chunk that chunk there, maybe that chunk, and then that chunk, okay? 
So you have, always have a lighter side on one side, slightly darker on the other. We're going to do the same thing over here when we get there, which is a minute or two. First, we need to draw our tree trunk, excuse me, paint our tree trunk. So my coloring friends, feel free to keep going. Um, and that's pretty much about it for you to call it a day. I know I didn't finish mine, but that's okay. All right, painting. Can't wait to see these. Hopefully you guys will share these with all of us too. So painting, I'm gonna grab my number six round mommy brush, okay? And I'm going to mix a gray with brown. So black, white, and gray. I have it already going on right here. Black, white, sorry, black and white is gray. Black, white, and brown. It's a, it's a brown, but it's a very much of a gray brown. I'm gonna start on this part of the hill, not up here, but this line right here, the one that goes in front of the barn here, the side of the barn. That's where I'm going to start my tree. My tree is going to grow coming out of the top of this little hill. <clears throat> I'm going to draw a line pretty much kind of straight, but about vertical. Is that better? Kind of vertical. All right, it's too gray for me, so I'm going to add some more brown in there. There we go. This is that first one right here. And I'm not going to go up very high. Okay, I'm not going to do a lot of tree branches because you're not going to really see them at the end of the day anyway. Okay, but I am going to see where it forks off right here. So I'm going to kick it off to the left and then kind of pointing up a little bit. Now, just be mindful of the thickness of your tree trunk. For example, you don't want it to be thicker up here and thinner down there. You want it to make sure that this is thinner. I know we know this consciously, but as we're painting, sometimes we forget, right? <clears throat> so we are going to now make sure that this tree trunk, I said, get some more brown, it's a little thicker at the bottom. Now I'm gonna do another tree trunk right in front of it. And I'm gonna be mindful also of how hard I'm pushing my paintbrush. I'm gonna push it really hard at the bottom and I'm gonna get a bigger line. As I travel up the tree, I'm gonna push lighter and lighter, less pressure on my brush so I get a thinner line as I go. Okay, so I'm gonna come up. It's gonna veer off to the right a little bit before it bends to the right, if you look here, bends toward the roof, but then right as it gets up into the open area, it's gonna start to curve up a little bit. So bends to the right, comes over toward the roof. As soon as it gets into the sky here, I'm gonna bend it back up, kind of in the same direction, parallel to the roof almost. And again, making sure this is a little thinner. If it's too thick, you can compensate by bringing that line all the way down like I am doing right now and making the bottom even thicker. Okay. So now, some more brown. Let's make your, make it more look like a tree trunk or tree bark. You're going to streak in some brown like I'm doing in the direction the tree would grow. Hopefully you guys can see the brown on top of the gray, just to give it some texture. Okay. Wash my brush and I'm gonna, oops. I'm just going to add in a wee little bit. That's better. A wee little bit of brown down here as its shadow. Again, mommy brush, clean and dry. 
just going to do a little streak of brown at the base of the tree, left and right to make it look like a shadow. Okay. While that is drying, I'm going to come over here and do all of the white lines on my barn. Okay. You know, I'm moving a little fast right now. I just want to respect your time. So if I'm jumping way ahead of you, feel free to come back and watch the video again. Okay. Again, I just wanted to try and keep it to two hours and we're a little over and I'm going to do my best to to get you guys out of here soon okay all right so details again baby brush think of it like a pencil choke up on it like it's a pencil you're gonna write with it like it's a pencil right so you're gonna need to rest your hand down on or a pinky down on the canvas obviously be mindful if this is wet don't touch that but you can touch the barn the barn should be dry Okay, so load your brush from the side. Don't go in the top on this one. This is like a pencil now, so we need to load it. Go up to the, not quite up. Whoops, I accidentally went too far. Lost my balance. Okay, so you're gonna go in to the side, spin it and pull back. So that way you have just the right amount of paint and your bristles are also pointy, all right? Rest your hand down and you're literally going to trace around the windows. You're going to want to take your time on this. That's okay. I'm going to kind of rush through it really quickly just to get you the directions on how to do all of this. All right. So your windows, you got the rectangle around your windows. And you're going to try to make them as identical as you can, right? Unless you want to have totally different windows on your barn and that's fine too. But if you want to make it look like that barn, they're all identical, which is kind of difficult to do, but we try. Mine aren't even identical, but all right. So do our windows. And if you notice, I'm resting my hand on my other hand and my pinky down on my canvas to steady my drawing hand because right now this is essentially like drawing okay loading it from the side of the paint making sure i don't have too much paint on my brush okay these windows also have a sash right across so a line across the middle and it only has panes at the top half. And I think there's only six panes at the top. So there you go, line across the middle. I'll show you these in a second. Uh, or four panes at the top, sorry, my bad. Now, if you're getting a really, really thick line with your paintbrush and it's frustrating you, it's all in the pressure that you're using on the bristles. So I'm going to give you a little assignment here. Again, if it's really frustrating you, stop for a second, grab a piece of paper, and I do this in my, with my classes all the time. I want you to hold your brush, load it like you like I taught you, hold it like I taught you. And now what I want you to do on a scrap piece of paper, practice this at least five times so you'll get muscle memory and you'll know better how to hold it and how to push, okay, or not push. So as lightly as you can, see how thin of a line you can get by just touching your paper. So you're going to start with a very teeny tiny line and then as you go to the right push harder and harder and harder. So you see this one line this blue line here I created with the same brush, the only difference is how hard i'm pushing it 
Okay, so practice this technique at least five times just on a scrap piece of paper, you can do it now or later. Um, but once you get this, you'll know how light of a pressure you have to use to get a teeny tiny line. Okay, so do that first, then you can come back and do these teeny tiny lines with much greater success. All right, so that's another little trick. So here's the windows on the side of the barn, right? You can see they are nowhere near perfect. They're a hot mess. Okay, that's what I get for rushing. And I don't want you guys to rush, but I wanted you to see kind of what it's going to look like when we're done. All right, we're now going to do a line up the roof, down, and across the bottom, right? So up the side here. Just got green paint on me. Hang on. Okay, we're gonna go up the side here, underneath. So right between that gray, dark gray line and red line, or red barn siding. I'm doing white. So here, I put white underneath that dark line. Okay. Then I'm gonna do white on the top here down this, well, not top necessarily, but down this edge. And again, you need to have a steady hand. So hold your paintbrush like a pencil, put your pinky down or rest your hand down on the canvas. Steady your hand, steady your marks, okay? You're also going to go down all the corners of the barn, all the edges, right? Okay, white molding going down all corners. Have it on the windows up top. These windows up top just have four panes. I know I'm going fast. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, that didn't have it. This one does. Window. And these have six. Or you can do four. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, by the way, so you know. Because no one will know what the original barn on campus looks like if they look at your painting in your house. They're just going to see a beautiful barn. Okay. I painted this and I didn't mean to. This is supposed to be red. There we go. There we go. Okay. So that's how you get that done. I will show you this really quickly. Okay. There's the details on the barn. All right. Last but not least, our happy little tree. Again, back to, and it's the same technique as this, okay? It's just different colors. Pounce, 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 tap, tap, tap. And we're going to do green, yellow, and white. We need more green, hang on. Oh yeah, for those that ask, this is the paint that I get, black acrylic. Okay. And they do come in smaller containers too. They come in bigger containers too, but so you know that's what I typically use in my classes. I even use it in my school classes too. <laughs> 
sorry, I got my blue on my brush. All right, so you're gonna start with green. Let's outline some of these little sections, right? So we're gonna pounce, right? So I'm gonna have one little section here, this section right here. Can you guys see? Whoop, let's push it up. There you go. So we have a couple different like sections, right? We've got this one here. And I'm going to add some yellow to it as I go, right? Green, yellow, green, yellow, and white is what I'm going to do here, okay? To make it different than the other one and to make it so it stands out and you don't see the stuff in the back. Now, same thing with the trees in the back that we are going to do here now, the trees in the front. Very light pounce on the edges, okay? And rotate your can't your brush so it makes different marks every time very irregular marks very teeny tiny okay so do you see the difference this I did really heavy marks over here I'm doing very teeny tiny little marks around my edges okay it makes a big difference to have both big and little pouncing okay so I'm going to do this shape here so green, white, and yellow. And I'm gonna make, add some more green in there on this right side to make it a little darker. And I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow and white at the top left to make it a little lighter over there. Okay, do this section. So I'm gonna start with some green. Add some yellow and white. Teeny tiny pounces around the edges. And I'm going to leave it a little darker in there to make it look like this is in front of that. Okay, blend it in a little better. So just kind of like um, when you see a woman put on makeup, you if you see her foundation, she didn't blend it in well, or her her blush and she didn't blend it in well. You want to make sure you blend it in. Okay, um, so this is pretty much the last. Step, okay. In fact, it is the last step. We're just going to add a few of these kind of egg kind of shapes, you know, kind of oblong. I'm going to do one over here. I'm going to do this one here now above the. There's one there. Okay. I'm going to add one that's kind of like that shape. Okay. Maybe one that's up here. And then one big one in the front here, okay? Green, yellow, and white. And this you may want to do multiple coats of if you're seeing through it. Again, teeny tiny taps around the edges. Go back and forth between green, white, and yellow. Trying to make your taps really irregular. Putting the dark color toward the bottom of this oval shape, right? Green, yellow, and white. I'm gonna come around here. Do one in here. Make it darker at the bottom of this little section. Green, yellow, and white on my brush. And I'm going to do this big section over here. This one, I'm going to have it go right off the canvas. Again, do teeny tiny pouncing 
around your edges to make it really kind of blurry. Change that a little bit, right? Darker green down the right side and underneath. Okay, and that's essentially all there is. Now, if it's not dark enough for you, pounce in a little bit of brown. In with that dark green, right? Around the bottom here, maybe. You just keep on going. You keep on smushing. You keep on pouncing. And if you don't like it, let it dry and add another layer. That's pretty much it, you guys. Is there any questions? As we're continuing to kind of pounce a little bit. <laughs> You're welcome, Emily. Again, feel free to go back in on this, you guys, and add more colors, add more layers. It's the same. Just keep the same technique for the same section. Same thing over here, right? So we went left and right to make it look like, even here, left and right, to make it look like siding, same thing. If you do another layer of it, do it the same way. Just add another layer of color. Anyone else? All right, so they're asking, Emily, they're asking how to share. Hi everybody so if you want to share your finished product you can go ahead and post on social and tag at uconn alumni you can also um message uconn alumni directly as well and we can go ahead and then share on our social pages so do you guys um emily and lauren do you guys want to tag me um or put my so i if they have questions or anything like that yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to email us and we'll pass those along to Aaron. If you would like to um, tag Aaron in the photos, it's um, at Paint Sip Fun. Is that correct? Yep. Exactly. All right. We'll, and we'll put that in the chat. Yeah. And Carol, I'm glad you just got back to painting. You are welcome. That's kind of why I do this. I, I believe everyone is an artist. Um, and um, I'd like to empower you guys to give you the um what is it the power i guess to to create your own stuff so yeah you're welcome hopefully i'll see all you right. guys in summers <laughs> all right everyone well thank you aaron so so much for this this was awesome and being able to paint those jacobson barn is so fun um and thank every thank you everyone for attending and i hope you had some a good time and please let us know if you have any feedback um and that is it. I hope you all have a great night. Thank you, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, Thank everyone. you, everybody. Yay, your second time. Definitely share. Good, good, good. <laughs>